Hello, everybody. My name is Jim Farmer. I'm the festival director of Out on Film at Lina's LGBTQ Film Festival. This is our 37th year, and we have some amazing programming this year. Um, as always, we have some great short films. Um, our Trans Fabulous program is extraordinary. I'm so happy uh, to be able to present all these films. And one of the amazing films that we have um, as part of this program is Almost Pride. And we have um, Shitra from The Prim, who's the producer, to tell us a little bit about it. Thank you so much. Of course, pleasure is mine. Thank you for having our film at Out on Film. It's a uh, pleasure. Well, just tell us a little bit about yourself and tell us about the film. Yeah, so I'm a filmmaker based in New York City, but um, and I've lived in the United States for, uh, for about 20 years now. And the story came to me through a friend, um, you know, that our director Shiva was working on the story and the story is Amas Pride is set in a small town called Tutukuri where I was born yeah. and raised um, and I have not seen a film in the documentary world come from my small town yeah. and so I got super excited and got um, engaged with the film. The film is a story of a trans woman um, her name is Shrija and um, you know she falls in love with a cis man and dares to marry him in a country where um, you know same-sex marriage or any anything that is not heteronormative is not recognized and she sort of um, wants a public wedding goes to a temple you know defies authorities gets married and then fights for legal recognition of marriage and wins it and you would think voila life is going to be fine after that and that's when trouble starts because there's so much publicity around this that you know um arun loses his job her her um, spouse now and then um you know the family his mom wants him to divorce her and you know like there's a lot of societal and family pressures start coming in and so the story is about how do they cope and you know um do they um and the only the remarkable thing about all of this is typically these stories are of um you know, the stories of resilience are also of isolation, right? There is not, not much of family support. There's not community support. She's just super lucky in that front that her mother is 100% on board and supportive and is there no matter what happens. So so that's that's the heart of our story. This seems like, oh, we have Beck Williams. Okay, great. We have another filmmaker joining. That's this awesome. seems like this seems like a very personal film. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, where where would you say Amas um, Pride is right now in its festival run in terms of other festivals that it's playing? So Amas Pride premiered in Krakow in Poland, Krakow Film Festival in May, um, and then it was at Black Star at Philly. Um, and then it's, you know, so it's, it's playing the same weekend at Out on Film and it's in, it's having a Canadian prem premiere at Indian South Asian Film Festival. Um, and then it's, yeah, it's got a bunch of festivals in October, um, you know, and Simon, we're still applying to a lot of festivals. Simultaneously, we are doing, we're thinking about showing the film in India. So December, we're, we'll have a premiere kind of in India, yeah. um, and then uh, potentially our goal is to take the film to a lot of villages. Hello, Beck. Um, and and we want to have conversations around family support. So our, our ultimate goal is to take um, the film to rural communities in India. So we're setting things up for that to happen in January and February of um, next year. Wonderful. And um, Bali and Shrija and our films do not have passports, so we just got their passports and oh, we're wow. trying to get some visas um, sorted out. Maybe if everything happens, June of next year for Pride Month, we're going to do a six-city tour in Philly, New York, New Jersey, Washington, D.C., um, L.A., and, and East Bay. That is amazing. Beck, hi. Thank you so much for joining. I, I apologize. We're dealing with a hurricane down here and, and having to scramble. We might have to move tomorrow's opening night. So I, I've just been really wow. late today getting stuff and sending people and, and time has just escaped me, power out of Zoom. Thank you so much for, for being patient, joining in. Beck, Absolutely. please tell us um, 
a little bit about your film and tell us about yourself as a filmmaker. Okay, great. Um, uh, my film is Pace. Um, okay. It's about uh, these two uh, trans boxers who are navigating their own separate challenging journeys. And uh, when they meet and train together, they find a lot of solace and community together. So um, it's a special film that's close to my heart. Uh, as a filmmaker, uh, this is, uh, I, I had made before, I had made um, like a proof of concept short and then like a smartphone short. So this is kind of like my first, like on this level kind of a film set that I wrote directed so um i'm really excited about it uh, i'm an actor too so um uh, a lot of my career has been in acting but um you know i, I love to write and direct as well so it's it's exciting to have you know bring this story to life and i had a really great team so uh i'm really thrilled to be part of that on film uh, we are so excited and this program is amazing and thank you all for uh contributing your films i'm so excited about this program i cannot wait for audiences to see because they're really going to like it but um Beck, where, where are you right now in terms of your festival run? We're actually really early. So okay. we just premiered at Out South in North Carolina. Uh, I guess that was in, yeah, in August. Um, and so, yeah, this is our second festival. We're very early on. And uh, yeah, we just, you know, completed the film earlier this year. So getting the ball rolling. How long did it take both of you to make your films? Oh, wow. It was a four-year process. Um wow. Yeah, because we started filming in 2019 and then, um, you know, we thought the story was going to be about the legal battle and stuff. And then the director discovered that, you know, that um, the, the press wasn't reporting about a supportive family. And we were like, that's the story we want to cover, because that's a very rare thing in India to have a super supportive um, you know, family support. And then we saw the marriage fall apart. So then we were like, oh gosh, you know, what, you know, we wanted to wait to see what's happening with them. Um, so yeah, we, you know, sometimes life takes its own time, right? Like you just have to, in a documentary, you have to just wait. So yeah, it took us a while. And then, and then India had its COVID, like, it, it was like things were not super bad in the first two years and then I think it was a delta variant that really sort of shut the country down so we had to then wait for that and and then editing with documentaries take their own sweet time so exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Beck how long did pay yeah. um first of all that's so interesting to you know I don't come from the documentary side so it's fascinating to hear that there is so much that's out of your control that you kind of have to I don't know, go with the flow as you're, as you're moving along. So um, congrats on that, on, uh, on getting through all of that. Um, Pace took, a, I would say, I start, we filmed about a year after I wrote it. Uh, and it was, um, we were kind of trying to figure out how to get funding for it and working on that. And that took a while. And then eventually we, we did uh, do crowdfunding and uh, which I think is lovely because our community kind of came together and, uh, and, you know, got to be a part of it, which I think is uh, special. So we filmed, yeah, we start, we, I think I filmed at the beginning of um, 20, uh, sorry, I wrote it like early 2023. And then we filmed this past February. So it took about a year, which is not bad, honestly. Um, although, you know, being kind of in the, the actual experience of it, I, I was like kind of chomping at the bit. I'm like, I just want to get this done. I don't know how, like, I don't know how we're going to do this. You know, it's kind of an undertaking for all of us filmmakers to make something like that. So um, for me, it felt like a long time, but uh, you know, it's uh, in the grand scheme of things, it wasn't that bad. Have either of you had a chance to see this with an audience yet? Yeah, about, yeah, definitely. What's, right. what's that experience like? Um, do you want to go first? Oh, you want me to go first? Yeah. <laughs> okay, sure. Um, Yes, uh, when it premiered, we got to see it in front of the audience, and um, it was it was pretty amazing uh, because I think I kind of forget that you actually can hear and and like feel people's reactions uh, in the theater, and to see it like that, it kind of changed it for me. I mean, you know, when you work on your own film, you see it so many times every uh, every step along the way, and so um, it it actually I kind of saw it in a different light this time. It, it was like seeing it fresh because it was with other people who have not seen it before and people were reacting at certain parts and like, you know, I've seen it so many times, but now I was like, oh yeah, like it, it felt like a new experience for me. And uh, so it, it's pretty thrilling to get to share that experience with an audience. 
That's great. That's awesome. Yeah, no, I, I, I completely agree. Like, um, I think our first screening was, a, was in Poland, in, um, in Krakow. And oh, prior to that, prior, once we got into the festival, we went, uh, well, not me, the director and the impact producer who live in India, went, took the film to, to, to Tutukuri where the, our characters live and showed it to them first. So they, that was technically our first screening right and they they watched the film and since they didn't like the rest of the team went to Poland but they could not come because they didn't have passports at that time so what we did was we the director got on stage with his cell phone and he lifted the cell phone up and it was a houseful audience so he asked everybody to wave their hand and say hi Shrija and he recorded that and he sent it to her um so it was yeah so we felt yeah and, and then so people people were you know really you know uh, went along with it and sort of participated and after that when we um, we some of there were we reached out to the local LGBT organizations over there. So there were some um, you know parents who came with their with their um, children, and so it was really moving to see a film that was made in South India connect so deeply with with the community in Poland, and you know having those conversations about so many things resonating in both the films. Yeah, it was it was very touching to have that experience. What both of these films do remarkably well and you know in a fairly short compact time is really give us vivid characters um can you sort of talk about you know beck your yours is a narrative film uh, on this pride is a it's a documentary but can you sort of talk both of you talk about you know making sure you get enough you know again in a condensed period of time, making sure that you have characters who are vivid and pop and feel like, you know, they're three-dimensional and, and lived in. Uh, sure. So um, you're, you're kind of, uh, if I understand correctly, you mean kind of like how you do that in like a short amount of time? Exactly. exactly yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a good question. Um, I think it's like very, I think it's really important to, um, oh my gosh, I have to think about this. Um <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. Um, I think one thing that uh, that I find uh, helpful in the process, especially like a short, I think is even harder to write than anything else uh, for me because you have to condense so much. Mm -hmm. um, but I think really honing in on like things like flaws and and fears you know what is your like what what are these characters so afraid of or like what is really holding them back and what is something about them that holds them back from from achieving what they want or you know uh what are they trying to overcome and and kind of like how much can you pressure that throughout throughout the short you know like uh just kind of showing how they react compared to maybe it, what what's unique about how they deal with their circumstances you know like for example you know uh i'd say something with, uh, in my film, one of my characters, Remy, is uh, very avoidant, you know, and it kind of gets that, that kind of gets pressed on that a little bit by Joey, who's, uh, who's the, the other character. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's that kind of those, those like fine details, how, what makes that different for, for them compared to, to one another compared to other people, you know, what are these like specifics? I'm just probably, I mean, obviously, I'm a spy as a documentary, but how do you, I mean, you just sort of, how do, how do you sort of go about deciding, you know, how much to show and whatnot? And I mean, I, I mean, what was your, was it, was this originally supposed to be 22 minutes or did you envision it being longer? Well, our first cut was 37 minutes. Okay. Um, and it was about like, so really kind of, and, and we were, I think initially, right, we were struggling between, not, not struggling, we were trying to make room for two things, right? Like one was a mom and daughter's relationship. And yeah. then the other was the the romance uh, between Shija and her, and her, you know, spa, boyfriend who became um, a spouse. And then we felt like we had to choose one to be the primary and then okay. one, you know, so yeah so we we didn't I mean we we, I, we didn't we didn't have I feel like we didn't have enough for a really strong 37 minute film yeah. but once we once we were able to let go once we figured that the mom was our main character okay. and and then we you know then we sort of centered it around her it was easy to then take away things from the film with her stuff we were really 
looking for you know you know we were looking for using as little of the interview as we can and we're looking for you know what were what were the things that we have in scenes that shows in you know shows shows that affection shows what you know what are the most emotional moments that are there that can really punctuate the story and how little how little has to be said and how much can be shown was what we were trying to pick in the film okay great so final question um queer representation is so important but but what does queer representation mean to you as filmmakers and we'll start with beck Um, I, you know, there's this saying that always comes back to me, um, you know, I've heard of it from different sources, but, um, you, it's like, you can't, you can't become what you don't know is possible, or you can't be what you can't see or something like that. And, um, that hits me personally, because I feel like there are times where, when I, uh, you know, when I watch a film with queer representation, I'm like, if only I saw this when I was younger, you know, I feel like, it, I feel like it would have opened so many things for me. I really thought, you know, with the naivete of being a, a, a child, I really thought I was the only one that felt like I did at that time. Um, it just wasn't talked to, you know, uh, a lot of things weren't talked about at that time. So I think to me, it's, it's, um, we're representing like, obviously like a, big important part of our our society and population and I think it's um it, it's allowing people to I think there's a couple it's all it's allowing us as you know queer audience members to engage and to see our stories told to see ourselves reflected and I think at the same time it creates a lot of empathy uh, for people that aren't as familiar with like uh queer stories or lifestyles or have don't know that they've ever met you know someone of of the community and um and uh, or you know just aren't familiar so I think like for that to kind of just like really humanize everyone and um and to kind of press back against uh stigma and uh oppression is like is essential and you can do that through storytelling because I think people can connect with with these characters yeah. and say, oh, I didn't know, you know, I didn't, I, I, and you're just like me, actually. So I think that's huge. Okay, great. Chitra. Yeah, like, it, you know, so when, when the story came to me four years ago, it was being, it was directed by a cis man, I'm a cis woman, and straight, both of us, and we were like, what are we, <laughs> my first question was, why are we telling this story, right? And then, and then it, I reached out to, um, to a friend in LA who connected me with Dilo, um, Dilo, who is a, you know, trans, a Sri Lankan trans actor, comedian, and I was like, Dilo, can you watch this film and let me know? And so we had like, it was not even a film at that point we had some scenes and and Dilo wrote back to me saying you know that he wished um his mom was like this at that at the moment when you know so it felt like and, and it felt like an opportunity to look at this film from allyship right um from the ally from the perspective of what the mom is supposed to do and the spouse is doing and also I, I you know and then when we started doing things in India we realized how hard it like if this film was going to be made by a trans filmmaker every single part of this journey they're going to be meeting so many barriers because just you know just the act of doing things and living it's it's, it's complex and and we we felt like um you know our job is to set the stage but not take the stage and in 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 in, in and so uh, for example just to get Shrija's passport um took us so so many months because of the barriers to get the passport right and like and 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 now we now we know that for you know future festivals we can make make sure that Trija and mom is able to come and you know they can like the first screening in New Delhi we're setting everything up but we don't want to be on the panel or we don't want to do any of that right like so I'm seeing like this what this film has taught me is there's so much that allies need to do um in terms of you know take you know being the buffer taking taking some of these things in communities and in spaces where um where simple things like like in I was 
was in August, this this uh, two weeks in India, where we were showing to trans activists the film because we are laying out an impact campaign. Sometimes when these trans activists are coming to our meetings, the, the Indian version of Uber that they're taking, just seeing a trans person, they cancel their ride. So sometimes they're waiting for two hours to come to a meeting. You know, is like some like you know everyday things are challenging, and I you know um, as a filmmaker who's kind of you know been working in the U.S., my first reaction when the story came was like I shouldn't be telling the story. I shouldn't be part of the story, and um, working on this project is sort of um, you know we, like we we are we 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 need we need an inclusive team, but we need a team where you know whether um, where there are things that you know uh, where our LGBT folks should be centered but there are things that where some of us need to sort of do the work you know set the like yeah we we need to like so one of the things we are going to make sure this film is going to do in India is um, what we call quote unquote gatekeepers right people who are in a position of power that the, the person who's issuing her passport the person who's issuing her ID card like all of these uh, you know people who at schools people people who are you know policing what what children are wearing in schools like if we can sensitize these these people when when someone is coming out or when someone is going and you know being in school or being in college or being at a workplace how can we you know how can we make life less complicated and less cha I mean, less challenging and more create more inclusive environments so that's i guess i did not answer your question straight but that's that's what i've been learning as a like I, you know, I I used to think this I didn't have a pardon, um, you know, pardon telling, you know, cure stories, and I feel like no, I feel like I need to be a part of, part of the team. It just just not take center stage when we are doing these things. Okay, great. Trans fabulous screen Sunday, September twenty ninth at noon, at the Midtown Art Cinema as part of Adam Film. It will be followed by a week of streaming. Um, the films were extraordinary. Um, Amos Pride, Pace are two of the extraordinary films you can find here. Beck, Jitra, thank you so much for sharing your films with us. I'm excited to be showing these to our audience. And thank you for taking the time to talk to us tonight. Thank, thank you. you so thank much. You. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yes. Thanks.